Hello and welcome to the Today Is Your Day show. I am so excited and elated that you are here with us today. Listen, I don't know about you, but I'm excited about our guest today and it's going to be good. It's going to be a good show. So I hope you have your pen and paper ready because it's going to be good. I'm excited. You should be excited and you should be ready to receive. Okay, as you know how we do, we start with prayer. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for allowing us to come together to not only learn, but to just be open to change in our lives. Lord, I pray that whoever's watching, that they be blessed by the show today, that something that they hear uh, blesses them, something that... Um, that they hear it takes them to the next level, something that they hear breaks a yoke or a struggle that they've been having in their lives. Lord, help them understand as our title today, you don't, if you're looking for help to get out of being stuck, today is the day because today is your day. Well, we just thank you that you're allowing us to talk. We're allowing us to to share on the airwaves or the, the internet world. And we just thank you for this chance, this opportunity to help others, because that's what this show is about. So we just thank you. We pray pray to you. And in your name, we pray. Amen. Amen. We thank you. We thank you for being a part of us today. Let's uh, make sure that as you are watching, you are pressing like and share. I need to do that right now. I need to make sure that uh, you all can... Come on, watch and comment. Let me make sure that you all can watch and comment today. Mm -hmm. Should be able to. Okay, I think it's public. I think it's public. All right. All right. Okay, so we are good. I hope again that you are pressing like and sharing. Now, we're going to start with some announcements. I want to make sure that you all know that Davis Consultants is here for you. We do life coaching. We do mentorship. We do business consulting and coaching and ministry consulting. Now, we're here to help you be the best you. Now, I want you to join me tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here on Facebook, where I will be a special guest on the show, A Word and a Song with Montre Roberts. We'll be singing and sharing a word from whatever God puts on our hearts. So I'm really excited about that. And I hope that you will join us again. Join me tomorrow right here on Facebook. I'll share it on my page and we will be uh, joining Montre Roberts as a special guest as on the word and a song. We want to thank Kim, who is a sponsor for the show today. Join her next Tuesday. Um, Let me make sure the banner goes up. Join her next Tuesday. Uh, Well, they'll be talking about interpretation of dreams and visions. You don't want to miss it. You can watch this on her YouTube page uh, and channel at the Proclamation 101. Again, you want we want to thank our sponsor, Kim, for the show today. Join her next Tuesday, May 16th at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on her YouTube channel, The Proclamation 101. Again, they'll be discussing the interpretation of dreams and visions. You don't want to miss it. Now, listen, you can be a sponsor as well. You can either DM me right here on Facebook or you can go to our website, davisconsultantsgroup.com. Again, you can be a sponsor as well, davisconsultantsgroup.com. Now, as I tell you, every time we have this show, I need you to know that we, we will always have a moment for today is your day. So we'll have our today is your day moment. And what are we talking about today? We are talking about getting unstuck. If you are stuck, the help is here. I want you to know that if you are stuck, the help is here. And I hope that you will get 
knowledge nuggets and something out of today's show to help you get unstuck. Now, when you are thinking of being stuck, this is what I want you to think about to get yourself out of it. You need to understand, starting with the word S, the letter S, C. You have to see yourself in a better state, a better situation, and a better place. See yourself with movement and productivity in your life. You're always moving, either towards your destiny or away from it. I need you to always understand that you are always, listen to me, if you get nothing today, know that you are always moving in your life. You're actually not stuck. You need to understand that in your life, you are always moving. So you have to see, I, we use the term in church all the time, you got to see it before you see it. See yourself in a better state and situation and place. You have to see yourself there. Use your spiritual eyes to see yourself in a better place. See yourself with movement and productivity in your life because you are always moving again, either towards your destiny or away from it. Again, we're getting unstuck. We're getting out of that stuck place. You also have to trust. You have to trust the process. You always have to see that God hasn't left you where you are. He is actually pushing you towards where you need to be. But not forcefully. Again, God, I always tell people, God is a gentleman. He is a gentleman. And know that wherever you are, he's right there. So don't feel stuck. Don't feel alone. I know things may not be uh, the way that you want them to be. But know this. God is pushing you towards your destiny unless you're fighting it. Unless you're pushing yourself back away from where the direction that he is trying to push you. Now, again, you first need to see. You need to trust. The next thing you need to do, you need to understand. Understand that trouble won't last always with the song. Trouble don't last, don't last always. Listen, you have to understand you are not always going to be in this stuck place. You're not going to always be in this stuck place. You have to understand that, what, is it, what does it say? Trouble, uh, uh, joy may come in the morning. Joy will come in the morning. I always tell people, no matter what time it is, I tell them, like, look, good morning. It could be nighttime. I'm like, good morning. Guess what? Because I know that I bring joy. I know I walk in the anointing of joy. So when I'm talking to y'all, when I'm there, I say good morning because what joy comes in the morning and morning does not always mean when the sun comes up. I need you to understand that. Listen to me. Joy comes in the morning and that's wherever I or you show up. But you have to understand, you got to bring that joy. You got to bring that joy no matter what's around you. Bring that joy. Because you can understand that you are not always going to be in this stuck place in which you are in. You also have to understand to continue to speak positive over your life, over you, over your situation. What? Faith comes by hearing. Faith comes by hearing the scriptures. Faith comes by hearing by the word of the Lord. Now, listen, faith also comes by whatever you're hearing. As I said, faith comes by hearing. Doesn't have to be the word. Faith comes by, okay, if I'm believe, if I'm believing that I'm horrible, if I'm believing that I'm always going to be the way that I am, if I'm believing all these negative thoughts, guess what? I'm going to start believing it. Mom and daddy always said, Mama said, You just like your daddy, or you just like your mama, whoever saying negative things. If you keep hearing that, you're going to start believing it. You're going to start believing it. So what are we doing? We need to continue to speak positive over ourselves, over our lives, over our situation. Again, faith comes by hearing. So you have to ask yourself, what am I hearing myself say about me and my life? Am I keeping myself in the stuck place by my speech? Listen, I, I can speak for me. Doors will close. Doors will close. They, it seems like they've been closing all around me. But guess what? I had to understand. I had to continue to talk to my mind, those negative thoughts of saying, oh, things aren't working out. Things aren't working out. It must be, you must be things happen. Things are not going well. But I had to remember, as they say, one door uh, closed, another one's opening. But, you know, in the meantime, before that other one opens, guess what? I'm going to be looking for that window. 
I'm going to be looking for that window to open up. Guess what? I feel the breeze. I feel the breeze. That door may not be open, but I'm believing that that window is open and I feel the breeze. Type in the comments. I feel the breeze. Because I'm telling you, that door may be closed. But if the door is closed, God's got a window. Come on. God's got a window that's going to open up for you. But you got to believe it. You got to believe it. As, as we said, either the stuck place, getting out of it, you got to see it. You got to trust. You got to understand. You got to continue. And the last is you got to kick out. You got to kick out those negative thoughts. You got to kick out that, that negative speech. When they come, say, oh, no. Oh, no. You don't. This, the old Jonathan doesn't live here anymore. Uh-uh. He, he may be down the street. You go find him. The new one lives here. The new one. Uh-uh. Jonathan's not stuck anymore. Jonathan is not stuck. It may look that way, but Jonathan's not stuck. So when those negative thoughts come, oh, the doors are closing, things aren't going well, blah, blah, blah. you out. Bye. Bye. It's okay. I got a window because I feel the breeze. I feel the breeze. So I want you to understand while these things are happening in your life, when you're feeling that you are in this stuck place, remember, whoo, y'all feel that? It may not look good, but guess what? I feel the breeze because the window is opening for me. So remember, it's time to be unstuck. So you have to see, you have to trust, you have to understand, you have to continue, continue thinking, speaking, those positive things. You have to kick out those negative thoughts and that speech and know that, guess what? Today is your day. As I always say in this show, it doesn't. your birthday is not just your day. Your birthday is not just your day. Every day is your day. You get up, you got a job to do. There's people waiting on you. There's people waiting on what you have to offer. So get unstuck. Now, listen, I don't know about you, but I am excited about today. That was our today is your day moment. I hope it blessed you or touched you in any kind of way. But I just want everyone watching to be unstuck. If you're in that stuck place, I promise you, get out, get out. But we're going to learn some more uh, things on how to get out of that stuck place with our guest today. I don't know about you, but I am excited uh, for my friend joining me today. I've known him for many years and I'm excited to hear what he has to say. I hope you all have your pen and paper ready for my guest, Master Ricky Watson. <laughs> Hello, sir. I am so excited. I, I've known this guy since what? You were a senior in high school? Uh, yeah, oh, I think so. That's yeah. It, right? yeah. Well, you knew me. I didn't. I didn't know you. I'm sorry. It's okay. It's okay. I was a fan. I was a fan from afar. <laughs> uh, I was at this event uh, at our uh, our old church, uh, Whole Life Ministries in Augusta, Georgia, and it was a prayer and praise rally. And I remember uh, sitting there, and I saw this. Um, they were uh, this young kid come out and start praying and he was praying down the house. And I thought, I need to go to this church. They teach kids how to pray. <laughs> you know, but uh, and here we are. Here we are. Many years later, uh, mm -hmm. friends, so we are elated uh, that you are here joining us today. And uh, I want to acknowledge people uh, for joining us. Uh, I definitely I uh, thank all of you for coming on today um, and joining us for the Today is Your Day show. Uh, who do we have here? We have Montre. Hey, hey, hey. We have Proclaim the Word uh, with Kim. We have Kimberly Scott. We have Harold Moore. Hey, man. I know. I know we got the mayor joining us today. Come on. I mean, the mayor's in here. Jeez. We got Kathy. We got... Uh, Jay Brown Norman, come buddy. Hey, we are so Ooh. elated that uh, let me let me post some of these. Uh, while I'm posting, please let the people know who you are, my friend. We are just card. Uh, thank you for joining us today. I'll let you introduce yourself, sir. Yeah, because you know we both can't talk at the same listen, time. Listen, <laughs> listen, just be happy I let you on the show. Just, just <laughs> I am, I'm, I'm extremely grateful. Uh, hey everybody, like you said, my name is uh, Ricky Watson Jr. We met 
over a decade ago now. Jeez. Uh, but yes, uh, my name is Ricky. I have been preaching the gospel since I was nine years old. Um, and uh, my spiritual mother is Dr. Sandra Kennedy. Uh, my spiritual father is uh, Apostle Matthew Stevenson. And I am the host of a podcast called Scriptures Revealed. A uh, podcast that is getting ready to start back up again. Um, I've also authored a few books. Uh, one of my favorites, uh, my my absolute favorite, is probably my smallest one, and that's called uh, "War of the Wills." Uh, you can get that on uh, Amazon if you would like. But it's about the heart's fight to embrace the future. That a lot of times when you're trying to follow God, you have to follow God into the unknown. But you've got to bring your heart to a place of peace and stillness if you're going to move forward. So, yeah, uh, that's out there. Um, I'm just a guy that loves Jesus and loves the scriptures. That's really the core of who I am. Uh, I was uh, talking to Jonathan before this. He knows I really hate talking about myself. <laughs> but uh, I, I, at my core, I really do love the Lord and I really uh, love the scriptures and I love God. Uh, not just because it's, it's something that I grew up in and something that I've just known all my life, but I love him because he's everything to me he promised he would be. Uh, and I think that uh, because I can lean on that and depend on that and rely on that, uh, I love him more every day. So I really love him. Really, really do. And he loves my crazy self. <laughs> so, you know, I'm going I'm, I'm to stick in there, hang in there with him uh, because he is a loving, kind God. And I love the scriptures. I love the scriptures because they give me the power that I need to become conformed to the image of Christ. And that and the image of Christ doesn't look when you don't have the scriptures, you're going to come up and craft and design what you think Jesus looks like. So for you, Jesus may look like being walked on, stepped over. Jesus may look like always having a smile on your face or Jesus may look like. But it takes getting into the scriptures to learn who he is and what he's like and what his moves are like. And the more you dive into those, the more you can be transformed into them. So, yeah, that's me. That's I'm the guy. I'm the nerd. I'm the guy that loves Jesus, loves the scriptures scriptures and loves talking about both. So yeah, glad to be here. So excited to be joining uh, my brother and friend. Uh, so excited about what God is doing in his life and, and just happy to be here. Um, and we are happy that you are here. Thank you, Tish, for joining us. I saw I saw my sister. Where's she at? Uh, I saw her. She announced, you know, she calls uh, Ricky there she goes. She calls her uh, oh. Ricky, uh, her middle son. Oh, hey, uh, hey Devana. <laughs> I even think Prophet is Smith for joining us today. The prophet's in the house. I love. Oh that. yes, we are excited about today's show. Now I, I know I you talked about a lot of things that um that you like. I did not uh hear you talk about how you love Chinese wings, and so we we like food on the show. <laughs> And uh, and we and we like to talk about it. Yes, yes. Um, now, since I've moved to Chicago, I, the, the the Chinese wings are not the same. I I love Chicago, I love the food, but the Chinese wings wings are not the same like they are in the South. But yes, I absolutely absolutely do love them. <laughs> um. So um, what we would like to talk about today is getting unstuck. Um, and uh. Hey, Jennifer. Hey, love you. I love you too, Jennifer. Um, we're talking about being stuck, being how people are feeling. You know, I talk to people all the time. I, you know, as I, I do life uh, coaching and and ministering all over the actually the world and um, <laughs> Southern Food Wins. Yes, and Kimberly's got can cook. Don't let her TV life fool you. She can throw down in the kitchen. I didn't have some of her food. So, um, I mean, this I'm is gonna... a hot show. We got mayors. Uh, listen, and hot and like breeze. <laughs> Come on. Um, <laughs> so, we're talking about that. And, 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 and I know you talk to people all the time. You minister to people. Um, and you pray, prophesy, preach, teach all over uh, the nation. Uh, and world. So tell people like what, what when you think of being stuck, what 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 does that cross you? You know, what, what comes to your mind when talking about being stuck? Uh over the years dealing with feelings feeling stuck personally, feeling talking to people who feel like they've been stuck, 
I think at this point and and stage, uh, when I hear the word stuck, I automatically go to perspective because the reality is being stuck is a feeling. It's not a reality. Mm -hmm. There is no such thing as being stuck. Uh, You can feel stuck. But the truth of the matter is life is a journey. And if life is a journey, you, you're always moving. And even when you feel like you're being stuck, it just means that there's something wrong with your vision, not necessarily something wrong with your life. Because if you can see something the right way, then you can adjust your behavior. And, and, and if you can see something the right way, you can even begin to take control and manage those emotions. But when I, whenever I hear the word stuck, whenever I feel stuck, I've been in, in, in places in my life where I felt stuck. I, I've recently come out of a season where I personally was like, God, I'm stuck. Ain't nothing happening. Ain't nothing moving. And the truth of the matter is I wasn't. The feeling was right. And I think what, what we have to learn to do, even in our relationships, our friendships, uh, uh, mentor relationships, all of that is, is give people the space to feel whatever they are feeling. All right. Uh, so if you feel stuck, be okay with it. Hey, I feel stuck. And then you need space to feel that, to, to, to sit in that. But the reality of, the, uh, of that is that you're not actually stuck. Your feelings are not synonymous with reality, right? Your, 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 your feelings are not synonymous with reality. And the way for you to get through a season of feeling stuck is you've got to change your perspective. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and that's how I view it. And especially for believers and Christians, right? We are believers and the, and, and the Bible says that we are new creations and creatures in Christ. It's impossible to be in Christ, in God and be stuck, because if I'm stuck in Christ, it means that Christ is stuck. So I can't be somewhere and I can't be experiencing something in a reality that's not real in Christ. So as long as Christ is progressing, then I'm progressing. The problem is I'm going to feel stuck if I'm not seeing my life the way Jesus is. I'm not seeing my relationships the way Jesus is. I'm not seeing uh, uh, my career the way Jesus is. So yeah, being stuck is really not a matter of reality. It's a matter of perspective. Uh, totally. Whew. That that's actually really good, and I think I think if we knew how to really you know change our perspective, we'll see things a lot differently. We'll see things a lot differently. Uh, uh, just going with the comments. Um, uh, uh, Kevin said, you know, repeat that on the perspective so the people can hear in the back. Uh, uh, they talked about uh, what do we got? Jennifer says, preach. Just card. <laughs> That's totally true. Love it. Listen, uh, you got to change perspective. Very good. So, I mean, our perspective, I think a lot of times, and I've, I've had to um, even walk through that to help myself understand, you know, um, not just my perspective matters, you know, <laughs> even with that, but just talking about myself, it's like, we think things could, are so rough. Oh, my life is so horrible. Things aren't happening. Da, 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 da. This, you know, the sad story, the song that we sing all the time. Um, yet when someone changed your perspective and saying, you know what? But you have even the basic stuff. You're eating every day. You have, uh, you know, a, a roof over your head. You have clothes on your back. You know, the things that we sing in church, you know, oh, we got a roof on our head. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, you know, but those things. <laughs> That and and I think I was even talking to uh, Kim about that. It's like more so of staying in that grateful place Absolutely. because guess what? things can be so much worse. Things can be Absolutely. so much worse. Absolutely. Why, why do you feel that so many people feel that they are in this stuck place? Oh, I could write a book on that. Uh, <laughs> An hour show, so just, just <laughs> uh, hey, y'all, y'all come over to this is your day part two after this. All right, I'm just all right. <laughs> my my shirt says today is your day, so I I don't know what this is your day is, so, but it's okay. Okay, okay. Uh, like it, church, please DM me. I, I hope you all like it. Nice, all right, nice. Yes. Okay, but go ahead. Okay. I'm just being silly. Yeah. He a model, y'all. Okay. Um, so, <laughs> but yeah, I, I feel like uh, there are several things. Uh, there, there, there are several things that plays into that. And, and number one, yes, I totally agree with the gratitude part because uh, in grateful people, if you're if you're in grateful, 
then you uh, or ungrateful rather you, it's going to lead to entitlement and if you feel entitled you become the god of your own story all right i'm gonna say that again if you are ungrateful then that's going to lead to entitlement and if you have a sense of entitlement then it makes you the god of your own story and what do i mean by that is that a lot of times when we're looking at our lives we forget that we are not god one of the things even when you're when you're taking time in prayer and meditation and just sitting with god a lot of times you should really start your time uh with god first and foremost realizing don't don't even go and jump into repentance you know because we love to beat up on ourselves don't jump into you know god i messed up here i messed up that you it, it may be a good place to start with lord you are god lord you are god and i am not lord you are god and i am not and then, and by starting there and, and reframing my mind and how i think about that it means that if god is god I could look at this, at my life, at my situation, and I may have opinions about it. And I may say, man, I, 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 I should be accomplishing more, or I wish I was here, or I wish I was doing this, or I wish I had more money here, or I wish I had this better connection there. It means that you think you can write your life story better than God can. And it's the same way when God rescued the Israelites out of Egypt, right? They get delivered. They get rescued. Now, they've, they've been slaves for 400 years. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, they get delivered. They are rescued. They come out. They are in a wilderness. And now they don't know how they're going to drink. They don't know how they're going to eat. And all of a sudden, they're complaining again. Watch this. So now we're back at perspective because mm -hmm. now they're looking at what they don't have and they forgot what god had already done for them so when you feel stuck uh, another thing that's probably going on in your life in your life is a is forgetfulness you, you probably have short-term memory you know when the israelites got in the wilderness all of a sudden it was you brought us out here to starve and and we ain't got no water and, and, and they had totally forgotten that God had drowned an army in a Red Sea. They had totally forgotten that God had done something for them they had never seen before. And a lot of times in our lives, when we get in those places of feeling stuck, number one, we, we, we're going to start forgetting that God has done some unbelievable things in our life. He has done things for us that we have not seen him do before. You know, we've seen him get us out of situations that we didn't know how we were going to get out of. We've seen him come through and pay stuff off and we didn't know how we were going to pay it. But what happens? That perspective leads us into forgetfulness. But while they're in the wilderness, God is still writing the story. And, and, and if you fast forward 40 years, right, you fast forward 40 years and they're finally uh, inheriting the promised land. God starts downloading for them. Hey, y'all want to know why I had you in the wilderness for 40 years? Uh, it's because I wanted to train your heart. I needed to test your heart. I needed to test your loyalties. But And we and we love to, to teach on that, to shout on that, to jump on that. But what we miss about that is that God didn't give those explanations until 40 years later. If we put that in our lives, we are standing in today complaining that God is not having conversations with us, that he's already written in the story to have 20 years down the line. We don't know. Think about your life right today. Think about your life right now. Think about, you know, the last 10 years, 15 years of your life. Think about things you now understand. Wow. I know why God connected me to that person. I, I can see why I was on that, that job. I could see why I, I could not stand them coworkers, but I can see what that, what I benefited from. Why you're, you're in the future now. And what happens is we develop an appetite a uh, 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 frustration and we get irritated in, in the present because we want something out of the future and we're not in, enjoying today. You know, you know, just like, you know, the name of your show today is your day. You've got to live in today. And if you don't live in today, you're going to be frustrated by it. That, 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 that's what happened. People that are frustrated about today, frustrated about their life, frustrated about their marriage, frustrated about their finances, it's because you are trying to live in tomorrow. And, and when you try to live in tomorrow and you're not embracing today, learning from today, resting in today, then you're going to go back to feeling stuck. It's all going back again to that perspective. So yes, you need gratitude because gratitude is going to protect your memory. 
and and and, and final thing i'm gonna toss it back to you what's so important about gratitude <laughs> gratitude and memory is, is what i love there's a, a translation of the bible i probably I don't know any translation of the Bible. I probably have it at this point, just because I I love uh, variations of the text. Uh, but one of, one of the translations that I love is is not an easy read, but I love the translation. Is the Young's Literal Translation, and and, and the Young's Literal Translation uh, in the Book of Genesis, chapter three, when the uh, serpent deceives Adam and Eve, right, and God is having the conversation with them. One of the things that Eve says uh, to God. You know, in the King James, it says that the serpent deceived me or he beguiled me or, you know, he tricked me. But what I love about Young's literal translation is that it translates that word and it says that the serpent calls me to forget. The serpent calls me to forget. How did Eve end up disobeying God? How did they end up uh, um, not following in the ways of God? They didn't just one day wake up and, and, and walk contrary to God. No, but the enemy told them a lie that made them forget. Right. And it's the same thing with our lives. When, when you get in that place of feeling stuck and feeling like you're not progressing in life and progressing what God has for you, somewhere you have bought a lie of the enemy that is causing you to forget what God has said to you. So, yeah, gratitude is going to protect the memory, because if you can protect the memory, you can protect your faith. And if you can protect your faith, then you will inherit your promise. I'm going to say that to you again. Natasha, sure, sure. uh -huh. be grateful. Got to be grateful because gratefulness protects the memory. And if you protect your memory, you are protecting your faith. And if you protect your faith, then you will inherit your promise. Can you say that one more time for the people in the back, but much slower? Thank you. Yes, yes. I'm going to walk back to the back where my microphone. <laughs> yes. Gratitude. <laughs> Gratitude protects the memory. Gratitude protects the memory. And when the memory, the, the purpose of protecting that memory, protecting your memory ends up protecting your faith and protecting your faith. If you protect that faith, it's going to be your faith that causes you to inherit the promise. But but Tell faith, me. this is Go ahead. Uh, uh, I mean, we can jump in there. Uh, I want to show the connection between faith and memory, uh, because a lot of times people say, oh, you just pray for me. So that, I, you know, I got increased my faith. You just pray for me. God increased my faith. And yet we have no biblical precedent for praying for faith. And, and the one time in the scriptures, uh, uh, I think I was with Kim the other week when I went through this, uh, actually. But the one time in the scriptures where, you know, the disciples asked Jesus, uh, Lord, please increase our faith. Of course, he was doing a whole uh, lecture on forgiveness. Uh, and they was like, oh, I'm going to need more faith for that. Uh, Jesus's response to them was not, okay, I'm going to blow on you and you're going to get it. Uh, his, his response was not, uh, uh, take, a, take a lap around the synagogue and you're going to get it. I'm going to lay hands on you and you're going to get it. No, he told them to use the faith they have, right? Because, because Paul later tells us in the book of Romans that faith comes by hearing. So if I want faith, I'm not going to get it by praying for it. I'm not going to get it because somebody laid hands on me. I'm going to get it through my ear. Faith is going to be imparted in my heart through my ear. Right. But when I need to use my faith, faith resides. Faith comes by hearing, but it lives in my memory. Faith comes by hearing, but it lives in my memory. And what do I mean by that? So if I if I heard the promises of God. At the moment I heard his promise, I received faith for that promise. Now what I've got to do is when I need to use my faith, I need to recall it from my memory. I need to pull from my memory. No, this is what God said. I need to pull from my memory. No, this is what this is what God did the last time he said something like this. I pull from my memory. That's why Hannah gets in the in the temple. And she's crying out before God and pouring her heart out. And, and, and the priest Eli says, wait, is this woman drunk in the temple? Like, what is going on? Like, it, it, he didn't even realize she was praying. Like, she must be drunk. And he tells her, the Lord has heard you. He's going to answer you. He has answered your prayer. And the Bible says that when Hannah went back home, that when she uh, went into her husband, the Bible says that the Lord remembered her. 
the Lord remembered her. So she was able to move in faith. There's a connection again between that faith and that memory. So yeah, faith comes by hearing, but it lives in the memory. So if you will be grateful, it safeguards your house of faith. And the house of your faith is your memory. So, so, so gratitude is like having a security system for your faith, right? Have that, have that security. And when you become ungrateful, it means that there has been a security breach on your faith. So you've got to make sure you have that security intact. I'm, I'm grateful. I'm, I, I praise God. You know, people talk about from a child. You know, I've, I have been a praiser all my life. <laughs> as far as back as I can remember, I'm going to praise God, and I'm probably going to look foolish and ridiculous when I do it, because you know, I just, I just love to praise Him. But, and, and, but I don't do it because it's churchy, and I don't do it because I want attention, or I don't do it because it's just something to do. I do it because I've learned the secret of praise and protecting my faith. That there are times when I feel like I'm going to break and my antidote for that is praise. There are times when I feel like I'm losing my mind and the antidote for that is praise. There are times where I feel like I don't know what God is doing. I don't even know if God is listening to my prayers. I don't know if my fasting is working, if my sewing is working, if my uh, disciplines are working. I don't even know if this devotion is accounting for anything right now. But when I'm in moments like that, if I I can throw myself in praise, which is gratitude, then what happens is that security system starts being, becoming active on my faith. And all of a sudden, one moment, I thought I was losing my mind and I didn't know if I was going to break. Now that I've gotten praise, now it has secured my faith. And now I at least have enough hope and faith for another day. And sometimes all you need is another day. I'm going to leave that alone because I feel like preaching now. <laughs> All you need is another day. All you need is another day. And so if you will commit to praising and being grateful, it, it, it does something for your faith and it will give you the, the tenacity you need to fight one more day. Mm -hmm. it, it's so funny how we forget. We forget. I, you were talking about that. It's so funny how our memory goes so quickly. So, so quickly. So quick. again, like I was saying, you know, we're looking at these situations of things. Really, it's more so of I'm praying, but things aren't happening as fast as I want them to. Absolutely. And so since things aren't happening as fast as I want them to, God's not listening. My life is uh, hell. Um, things just aren't happening. And so I must be stuck. I must be in this horrible place instead of really looking with our spiritual eye, like stepping back and saying, you know what? Things aren't really as bad as I think they are or my natural eye see. I really. Right. And the thing is, absolutely. Absolutely. And the thing is, we do that because we love playing God. Like who mm -hmm. gave us the right to say that our life was bad? You're not the, if he is the author and the finisher of our faith, then nowhere did God ever make you the author. You, you, you're not the writer. You're, you're not the one orchestrating the, the, the pieces of your life. And so if I'm not the author, I don't get the right to say that my life is bad. This relationship is bad. This career is bad. Where mm -hmm. I live is bad. Because what I'm saying is, is that the author wrote a bad story. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so every time that I say uh, this is this is not I, I, I should be here and I should be doing this and I should have that. I'm saying, God, you're not writing my story good enough. I, I'm i going to take the pen because I know how to write this. I know how to write a good story. We act as if God hasn't been writing stories since before time began. <laughs> like he's, he's he's not an amateur at this. He's quite the professional. And I think, again, it, it's that it's that. uh, uh idolatry of self that leads us into ungratefulness. We, we, we become totally ungrateful when we make ourselves God. I, yes. I um, go ahead. no, go ahead. No, I was agreeing oh. with Kim. I was like, yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, it's, it's like, uh, while you were talking, I just kept going back to, um, the children of Israel was like, we, like I even said in my uh, Today Is Your Day moment, it's like, we're moving towards, we're either going towards our destiny or away from it, but we're always moving. But it's Absolutely. more so like all that complaining that we do, just like they did, and they were walking towards their destiny. It was like, he was leading you out. 
but things weren't looking good. It was taking too long. Uh, I'm hungry. I, I, you know, my feet tired. We've been walking for, I mean, it's like this 40 years that we've been walking, we could have done in a lot shorter, a lot shorter. Uh, uh, People are still walking right now. (laughs) (laughs) No, 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 that's a good point. No, no, no. That's a good point. Uh, but I, I, even, even to take that a little, a little further, Oftentimes, you know, the scripture tells us that they were in the wilderness 40 years, but it was only an 11-day journey, right? So they could have got to the promised land in 11 days. That's great. There are a lot of things that we take a lot longer to do that it should not take us that long, right? But the other side of that is sometimes, yeah, you think about it. Yeah, you could have got there in 11 days. Yeah, you could have got that degree a lot sooner. Yeah, you could have did better with that relationship. Yeah, you could have, you know made that move quicker and sooner but the bible also tells us that even though they could have got there in 11 days it wasn't even a part of the plan of god to get them there that soon because he needed to teach them how to war he needed to teach them how to take care of their property he needed to teach them how to relate to one another because they were learning a totally different new system of civil laws so so yeah you may think man i need to be here and i need to be doing this and i should have more money and i but yeah you probably yeah you could get there you can get more money quick but you probably need this time to learn money management yeah you could have you know got that degree sooner but you probably needed to learn a little bit more about time management. Yeah, you could have done better in that relationship, but you probably needed to work a little bit more on your soul so you don't get in relationships and self-sabotage. So yes, we can get it a lot sooner and a lot quicker and it is attainable, but sometimes God takes us the long route on purpose. Again, we've got to give God, I'm about to steal this from Kim, we've got to give God his pen back, right? We've got to let God write the story and stop saying where you know man I, I should be here no you don't know how you would be if you were there you don't know how you would handle if you had that so what what you should focus on is what could i be acquiring now what skills could i be honing in now what things can i be developing now uh what is it what is it about me and my relationship with myself that needs to improve so that when I do get to the place of promise, I don't get there. And I now I got the promised land, but I don't know how to farm. I don't know how to harvest. I don't know how to build houses. I don't know how to uh, 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 relate to to uh, the livestock of, of my neighbors. I don't know all of these things that the Israelites, they had never considered because all their lives, they had been slaves, right? All they knew mm-hmm. is you do all this work. And then somebody's going to give you something for that word that you that will, you know, give you the barely enough food and, and provision to take care of yourself. Now you're going into your promise. And the promise is not about doing all this work and somebody's going to give you a handout. The promise means that now I've got to work and I've also got to make sure that I'm farming so that my family has food to eat. Now I've got to make sure that, yeah, I'm doing this, but now I've got to make sure I'm not building the tabernacle and building government buildings and and and, and forgetting that I also now I've got to build my own house. So yes, the promise is there. It looks beautiful. It looks bountiful. It looks amazing. Your promise, your prophecy. Yes, God meant what he said when he said it. But how many of us are really ready to live and what God prophesied about us, right? So we gotta we gotta take into account all of that. You can't just. Then it make me <laughs> I mean, you can't just throw out there and be like, "Okay, I'm gonna sit back. Go ahead. Can we back with the? Yeah, <laughs> come on. What else? Uh, interrupt. But uh, even that will make you more grateful. Like, man, you know what? I'm getting uh, anxious. I'm, I'm getting discontent yes. and all of that stuff, but. Man, God, I'm, I want to I want to thank you that you didn't give me that million dollars when I wanted it. I, I, I'm thankful that you didn't give me that relationship when I wanted. because if I had got the million dollars when I wanted it, I probably would still be broke today. <laughs> if I got the relationship when I wanted it, I may have ended up in a divorce today. If I had gotten the career I wanted when I wanted it. I probably would have missed out on some connections that I now have because I took a job I didn't think I wanted, right? So all these things that you, we've got, again, we're back to where we started, perspective. Listen, listen, <laughs> I just want to say, um, I'm okay with God giving me that million dollars then and now, just want to throw that out there. If God, God, I know you're listening. 
I can definitely work with that million dollars. If I blow it, God just bless with me again. But um, besides that, uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah now, we, now we sound like four kids. <laughs> I feel like we're, we're so in that place. I, I think it's even just listening to you. It's like, and I, I think, uh, I think uh, Kim said it. Come on, Kim. Um, she had talked about how, like, patience. We don't have patience. And, and, and then that, I mean, I mean yeah. I'm even talking to myself. It's like, like I, I talked earlier about those doors are closing and you're looking like, okay, what's happening? Knowing that God knows those doors closed. Absolutely. God knows that it was taking that journey. I mean, that, you know, I always tell people, it's like, you have to learn within the process. Learn within the journey. Yeah. Yes, I know it sucks. Yes, I know it's taken a long time. But if you step back and you look like, you know what? As you were talking about, you know, I gained so many skills from that job that I took that was rough. It was rough, but I learned so much from it. You know what? Yeah. I was in that relationship, but I now see that, you know, I can now go into this new and knowing the things that I was dealing with and hurting somebody else because it was from trauma. So now I need to work on this, this healing process that I gain from being in this learning from this relationship. I mean, like all these little things that we don't realize that we gain when we're going through all these things. But again, like we talked earlier, we want it done now. Lord, I prayed, I prayed tonight that um, I want that million dollars okay, tomorrow morning, God, I don't understand. It's like, he's not listening to me. It's like, all these doors are closing. Where's the million dollars? And God's like, right. listen, listen, you ain't even filled out a job application. And so it's like, uh, like, how can I help you if you're not doing anything? But all I hear you doing is complaining. Oh, yeah. this journey. Yep. Yeah, I want to go back. I want to go back to Israel. You know, this journey is just taking too long. Why are we still Absolutely. walking? <laughs> you know it's like what well, we don't understand it's like we have to be patient oh, we just have to be patient with what god is doing in our lives we have to understand that as we're working he's working it out for our good no matter what it looks like but am i really stepping back and paying attention to what's going on or am i just focusing on the things that are happening that i don't want to happen um, and I think a lot of times we just fall, we fall prey to that. We fall prey to, you know, I'm seeing this life that people are living on uh, social media or in magazines or in television, but I'm doing all these things. I'm praying, I'm praising, I'm paying my tithes and offering, but I don't see these things happening for me, God. It's just, why are you taking so long? But I see, uh, Judy over there. I know she ain't paid her tithes because I wanted the uh, treasures of the church, but I see she's keep getting blessed. And yeah. so I need to also worry about comparison. I need to also uh, ask God to work on my heart on that. Why am I worrying about them? I need to be focused on me. And when I'm focused on me and saying, you know what? God is actually doing something because again, like we said earlier, things could be a lot worse. Things could be a lot worse. And Absolutely. now talker so i'm gonna let you talk again okay All you're right. good <laughs> yeah i know Free it's Pastor good. jonathan <laughs> <laughs> you're good um so and, and you may have you've hit a lot of these things what what are some things for people that are watching i thank you all uh for watching and joining us today on today is your day we have uh ricky watson jr with us and we are so elated i saw um coach vanessa adams join us earlier which is his mom uh, so we definitely thank her for her support. She's always not only supporting that son, but she por supports this one as well. And we just thank you. Um, what are some things that people can do besides, you know, you've hit some things, but what are some things that people can do uh, that maybe just joining that didn't know that uh, that they can do to get unstuck? Beautiful. One of the probably primary things I'm all always going to force people to do uh sometimes they hate when i say it <laughs> sometimes they love when i say it however i i don't say it just to say it i i live by this principle but one of my greatest and most valuable commodities is my ability to hear from god and mm -hmm. and i think that every believer 
has to uh, uh, develop that skill because uh, uh, hearing from God is a privilege and a skill. It's a privilege and a skill. Uh, God gives us the privilege to hear from him. And, and, and the beauty of Christianity, one of the beauties of Christianity is, is that we serve a God that is still alive. We're not following a dead prophet. We're not following a God that once was. We're serving a God that is living and, and he has a voice and he speaks. And, and even people today that don't believe in prophets and prophecy, uh, most of the time, if you get them to talk, you're going to find that they don't even really believe that because nobody is following the living God. And, 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 and at the same time, believing that he's dead, because the same people that are tell you God is not talking today will in the same breath tell you that they believe that he called them to do something. And I want to know how a God that can't talk called you to do anything. So every believer believes that God is actually talking. It, it is it, it is bringing that wall down. Number one, that, hey, he, he actually does talk and he wants to talk to me. And I think fundamentally, uh, uh, especially in, 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 in the New Testament, New Covenant believers life, is that that is one of our most valuable commodities is that we've got to hear from God. And the, the beauty and the challenging part of that is that the flesh, if, if we just stick to the flesh and the natural and carnality, it would be a lot easier if God gave us, hey, do this step one, step two, step three, and you're going to always get this. If you do step two, step, you know, A, B, C, you're going to always get this. And yet we find this, this dynamic and this beautiful relationship with God that there is no cookie cutter answer for that. The, the, the only cookie cutter answer is you've got to hear from God and you've got to obey God. Right. Uh, uh, and you can look in the scriptures and see it over and over again. I mean, how many times have I been in services or been a part of conferences or been a part of events that was we were all marching around our wall of Jericho. Right. And we were going to march and shout till the walls come down. And yet if I open up my Bible, I only find God doing that one time. <laughs> and, and if I look at, at the Bible in the book of Genesis and I see that uh, Abraham, when 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 famine hit the land and, 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 the, and the land was in famine, God told Abraham, I want you to pack up everything and I want you uh, 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 to, to move. I don't want you to sow here. I don't want you to build here. I don't want you to do anything. I want you to pack up your stuff and leave. And the Bible says that God said that to Abraham and, and Abraham obeyed God. He heard God, obeyed God, and he prospered. Now, Abraham's son, <laughs> right, Kim? <laughs> Abraham's son, Isaac, uh, uh, if, if he had stuck to that formula, if he had stuck to that formula and said, hey, my father, God told my father that when famine comes, we've got to get out of this land and go somewhere else and God's going to prosper us. If Isaac had done the same thing, he would not have prospered because what God told Abraham, to, uh, Isaac to do when famine showed up, he said, Isaac, I want you to build here. I want you to plant here. And the Bible says that Isaac ended up reaping a thousand fold in the middle of a famine. What was the secret sauce? What was the key? It wasn't, oh, I did the same thing Abraham did. Oh, I did the same thing David did. Oh, I did the same thing Elijah did. No, what I did that they did was I heard God and I followed God. I heard God and I followed God. I heard God and I followed God. That's that's the only thing that all of us are going to have to do that is going to be the same because I could be sitting in a service and God could, could tell me, I want you to fast for seven days. And at the end of that seven days, I may have been believing God for a new car. And at the end of that seven days, I get a new car. Now, I didn't get a new car. Now, here's the, here's the, the, the principle here. I didn't get a new car because of the fast, right? Technically, it wasn't because of me fasting seven days. I, I got the car with that. That's getting into that works mentality thing. Right. I think that's not why I got it. I got the car because I heard God and I obeyed God. I heard God and I obeyed God. And when we separate from relationship and separate from obedience, now we're getting into works. And if the enemy can get us into works, then he knows and it can almost guarantee that he can lead us into condemnation. 
And if he can lead us into condemnation, then what he can do is paralyze and handicap our faith. There are a lot of people that have a hard time believing God because they feel condemned about what they didn't do and how they, uh, 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 I don't wake up early in the morning and pray like so-and-so. So maybe that's why God ain't, ain't listening to me. Or at, at night I get sleepy, so I don't study the Bible at night like so-and-so can stay up all night and study the Bible. That's a, no, 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 no. What you need to do is what God told you to do. <laughs> and 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 find out what he wants from you and obey. That's the only thing. Hear and obey. Here, when you ask me, hey, how's your walk with God going? What we're really asking them is, are, are you hearing from God and are you obeying God? Not does your life look like your brother, because you can look like your brother. And for you, it can be sin, because if God told me to fast for seven days, but he didn't tell you that and you go on a fast for seven days. God may have been telling you that you need to go in and, and take seven people out for lunch this week. So while you so busy, shut up in your house fasting, you have missed the instructions of God. And at the end of your seven days, what are you left with? Frustration. I don't know why God didn't come through. I don't know why this is not breaking for me. I've been fasting. I've been studying my Bible. I've been shut up in the house doing this. Yeah, but you didn't take those seven people out for lunch like God told you to. <laughs> you, you, that's why he said, you know, sacrifices and all that. That's not what I've desired. I, I want obedience. I want obedience. And, and, and then the Bible says this. Uh, uh, when when Saul, uh, Samuel and Saul are having this uh, uh, dynamic and conversation and, and, and the prophet Samuel tells Saul, I want you to kill everything in the town. Right. Destroy everything. And then you're going to give an offering to God when I show up to the town. However, by the time Samuel doesn't show up when Saul wanted Samuel to show up, Saul got impatient. He thought Samuel should have been here by now. All right. I hope somebody's hearing me. He thought Samuel should have been here by now. Uh, 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 I've been waiting so long for Samuel to show up. I thought he would have showed up. I thought he would have done this. Right. So Saul got tired of waiting and ended up sacrificing to God, giving an offering to God. Right. Sacrificing to God, doing all that to God. And then shortly after that, the prophet shows up. And the prophet says, what is this? What's going on? What, what is this out here? Uh, 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 number one, the prophet says, didn't God tell you to kill everything in the town? And watch this. Saul had gotten so intoxicated by his impatience that he became deceived because when, when the prophet said, didn't God tell you to kill everything? Saul's response wasn't, I know and I'm sorry. Saul's response was, I did do what God tell, told me to do. And Sam and the prophet said, well, if you did, I don't understand why I can hear the sheep in my ear, because if you killed everything, I couldn't hear sheep. If you killed everything, I couldn't hear people talking. If you if you did, I couldn't hear these sounds. So watch. It's the same thing for us when we show up. And we're like, God, I don't know why you're not breaking through. God, I don't know why you're not doing this. God, I don't know. I, I, I'm doing all this. I, I did what you told me. I fasted. And he was like, I didn't ask you to fast. I didn't tell you to, that, that you need to uh, uh, take off from work and, and, and read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation in three days. I didn't tell you that. I told you to take seven people to lunch. <laughs> so why do I hear your disobedience in my ear? That's what he was saying. But Saul got so intoxicated by his impatience that he could, that he missed out on the fat and started doing things that were good, just not God instructed. All right. So if you want practicality for what do I do while I'm waiting and what do I do? Uh, 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 because we have this concept in our mind that waiting means sitting and waiting means no activity and waiting means no, no, no. Uh, waiting has to do that. I am actively obeying God while waiting for the manifestation of what's next. Right. <laughs> That's waiting. Waiting means I am actively obeying God. While I'm waiting on the manifestation of what's next. I'm going to give that definition one more time for you. Waiting means I am actively obeying God while I'm while I'm waiting on the manifestation of what's next. Right. It, there's an activity to it. I'm not waiting unless I'm active in my obedience. Right. Uh, so so that that is what we've got to uh, grab a hold of. And I think when people ask, hey, well, what do I do? They really most of the times are looking for this cookie cutter answer that, hey, you do this, you'll get this. And the thing is, it's not like that with the living God. You know, think about marriage relationships, friendships, 
uh, 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 intimate relationships. What would what would you how would you feel if, if somebody was a friend to you and everything they did to you was because somebody gave them a book and said, hey, if you if you buy Ricky some Chinese chicken wings, he, he is going to do this. He, he, he is going to give you a, a hundred dollars every time you do it. And so the first, you know, somebody brings me Chinese chicken wings and they're always bringing me Chinese chicken wings. And I'm just, I, I, it's, it's going to mean something different when I realize, oh, you're not bringing me Chinese chicken wings because you love me. You're not bringing me Chinese chicken wings because you appreciate me. You're not bringing me Chinese chicken wings just because you were thinking about me. You're only bringing me this because you're trying to get $100 out of me. And yet we do that to God. We're not coming to church because we love him. We're not reading the Bible because we love him. We're not fasting. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. We're not fasting because I want to be closer to the one who is the lover of my soul. Right? No, 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 no. Now I'm only coming to church because I'm trying to get a car out of God. I'm mm -hmm. only reading my Bible because I'm trying to get more money out of God. I'm only fasting because I'm trying to get better connections out of God, right? And so we've got to realize God doesn't want a formula relationship with us. He wanted to be based on, on being in love with him, wanting to be around him, wanting to be close with him. I remember uh, even in my relationship with God years ago, uh, I was talking to God one day and I was like, uh, I don't really feel like reading my Bible today. Right. You know, me and God conversations are really uh, <laughs> something. Uh, but I was telling you, I don't really feel like reading my Bible today. And and it totally blew me away because God's response to me uh, was, OK, you don't have to read it today. I'm I'm cool with that. He, he, he said, you don't have to read it today. I'm cool with that. And and, and I was like, mm, that's the devil. He done hijacked my mind. I'm about to get in this Bible and I'm going to read it another hour after that. And, and he literally started talking to me about, I only want you to read the Bible when you want to, because I only want you to be around me when you want to be around me. Mm -hmm. And when you don't, I'm OK with that. I'm not e I'm not easily offended. I don't have I don't I, I'm not so sensitive that. Oh, you, that I, I need you to be around me 24 seven. No, I want you to, and I want you to want to, and I want our relationship both to be based on what we want. I want you. So that's why I pursue you. And, and I want you to want me. And that is why you pursue me. And it totally changed my relationship with God. So that if I, if I missed a day, or or, or 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 two days and I didn't pray or a weekend I didn't pray or a weekend I didn't read my Bible. The next time I showed up with God, I didn't have to fight through condemnation. I didn't have to fight through shame and guilt about, oh, I know I ain't prayed all week. Lord, forgive me. Please hear my prayer. Oh, God, I know I ain't talked to you in a while, but I need I didn't have to fight through all of that because it, I don't I don't fight through that when I'm talking to a friend. Hey, if I ain't talked to you in a couple of weeks. When I call you, I don't have to fight through. Oh, I know I ain't talked to you in so long. I know I know. No, no, no. We just start talking. We just start laughing. We just start joking. We just start updating. Your relationship with God needs to be the same way. I don't have to go through all that shame and condemnation. No, I spend time with God because I want to. And 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 and, and when I, I don't get that time or I don't make it, God is not sitting in heaven like, oh, I can't wait to flatten his tires because he didn't pray this morning. Oh, I can't wait to make sure that, you know, all chaos break loose because his tithe check showed and cleared on, on the third. Uh, he, he's not doing that. You know, we got a God that got streets paved with gold. I don't think he's checking dots on making sure your tithe check clear in order for him to have a conversation with you. Right. We've got to make it relationship based. So that was a long, 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 long answer <laughs> to say oh. when you want practicality, you've got to start with, OK, God. I gotta steal myself. I've gotta quiet myself because when I when I when I'm getting quiet and I'm stealing, all, all of a sudden you're gonna notice all this noise is going on in, in the soul, right? When you first get quiet. And the reality is that noise is going on all the time, even while you're talking, while you're working, while while you're doing all that noise. And so when you stop talking and you quiet yourself, all of a sudden now you're noticing, wait a minute. This is why I couldn't hear God, because all this noise is going on on the inside of me. And so I've got to bring myself to a place of stillness, bring myself to a place of peace. Right. And I can do that. I can come to stillness through gratitude. Right. So I, 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 I bring myself to a place of stillness so that I can open up my ears to hear what God has to say. Now, I told you all I love the scriptures. This I'm wrapping up. I promise. I told you I love the scriptures. So my my uh, I, I am an advocate 
for you've got to be a person of the scriptures. I think everybody needs to have a Bible reading plan and not a Bible study reading plan, just a Bible reading plan. You just need to have time where you are just reading the scriptures just to read it. Why? Because reading the scriptures is going to help me learn a foreign language. I don't know the language of God. I wasn't born speaking his language, right? It's like if, if uh, I go and I live over in, in, in China, I don't know the Chinese language. I don't know it. So I've got to take time where I'm just learning Chinese words. I'm just learning Chinese phrases. I'm not I'm not writing paragraphs. I'm not writing dissertations. I'm not writing books. I'm just learning words and phrases. Why? So that when I'm in conversation with a, a person that speaks Chinese, I now can understand the language. It's the same way for the scriptures. I'm, I'm in the scriptures so that I can learn words. I can learn phrases so that when God talks to me, I recognize the language, right? So, so when I'm when I'm still and when I and I and I silence myself, now I can hear the voice of God. And I remember that I read in Psalm 23 that the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. So when I still myself and he starts talking to me about the fact that he he knows how to take care of my wants and he knows how to take care of my desires. If I would just let him lead me, I know, wait a minute, I know that sounds like him. Because I heard that I heard those words and those phrases in the scriptures, right? I I I I I've read the scriptures and and I and I and I and I saw in Ephesians, right, that it says that I've been blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. So that when I steal myself and God starts talking to me about, hey, Ricky, you need to calm down and you need to rest in the fact that you have everything you need to be a success right now. Mm -hmm. I, I, I know that's God because it sounds like the words and phrases of his language that I've been learning in the scriptures, right? So I, I think you've got to develop you know, making sure you're putting the scriptures in so that you can hear the voice of God, understand what he's saying to you, and then obey. And that's all you're required to do. You don't have to be perfect. Just hear him, obey him, hear him, obey him. And, 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 and that is how you will shift your perspective from being a person that's stuck to a person that's on a journey. Go ahead, take that breath. <laughs> This has been so good. I definitely want to uh, thank you uh, for being a uh, part. We have gotten so many uh, nuggets today. I, I, people have been going wild on uh, our comments. I definitely want to thank you all for participating. I want to give a shout out to Josie, uh, Betsy, Donna Perry, who will be on the Today is Your Day show on May 24th with uh, Young People Nation. We uh, honor she and her husband. They are doing a great work. They have a podcast that is really being a blessing uh, to everyone that listens. And you all need to check it out. It's um, Young People Nation. And we'll talk about that on May 24th. Um, I also want to thank my cousin Tammy for uh, being on. I want giving a shout out to all those that uh, I haven't given a shout out to uh, yet. Uh, that have been commenting. So I definitely thank you all for being a part. Now, before um, we get out of here, I'm going to make some announcements and then I want you to uh, pray or whatever you want to do uh, before uh, we get out of here. Um, so I definitely want to give another a shout out on announcements. Again, what do we do? Davis Consultants. Listen, let me let me make sure I put that website so y'all know and y'all can reach out to us. What do we do? We do uh, life coaching. We do mentorship. We do business consulting and coaching, and we do ministry consulting as well. We are here to help you be the best. That's you. That's your ministry. That's your, your business. That's your organization. We are here to help. Also, join me tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time right here uh, um, on Facebook. I'll, I'll have it shared on my page. I'll be the special guest uh, on the show, a Word and a song with Montre Roberts. We'll be singing and sharing a word from whatever the Lord puts on our hearts. I'm really excited about that. Nervous as well. But we just trust God. Hallelujah. And we're going to have a good time. Also, I want to thank our sponsor, Kim, who is the sponsor for the Today Is Your Day show today. 
Join her next Tuesday, May 16th at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on her YouTube channel, The Proclamation 101. They'll be discussing interpretation of dreams and visions. That is something you don't want to miss. Again, let me make sure I put that on the screen. You're joining Kim, our awesome sponsor, uh, to join her next Tuesday, May 16th at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on her YouTube channel, The Proclamation 101. They will be discussing interpretation of dreams and visions. You don't want to miss it. Also, you don't want to miss out on being a sponsor for the Today Is Your Day show. Listen, this train is moving and you don't want to miss it. I'm just going to tell you now. Remember I said this. Remember I said you don't want to miss the train while it's moving because you will definitely get left because guess what? That door may be closed, but that window's open and I feel a breeze. Listen, I feel a breeze. I feel a breeze. I want you all also to understand today has uh, the link uh, to um, Kim's The Proclamation 101 YouTube channel is in the comments. So make sure you don't miss it. Listen, today has really been a blessing to me. Listen, I understand um, the uh, the 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 power I love of you, obedience. Huh? The what? <laughs> oh, that's, yeah, yeah. She's awesome. Thank you for joining us, Becky. Um, go ahead. The power of obedience. You know, God told me. To, I've been in Augusta, Georgia for 22 years. God told me it was time to go. He told me to move here to Dallas. And here I am. And it's been a blessing. He told me in January to uh, uh, resign from my job. And so we are just, we're just trusting the Lord. We're just trusting the Lord and moving forward. Yes, again, I am not in a stuck place. Things may have closed, but guess what? I know a window is opening because I feel the breeze. I know the window's actually open. I feel the breeze and I'm just waiting. I'm just sitting and waiting, but I'm doing my part. I'm doing my part while I wait. I'm doing my part, I'm not sitting. I said I'm sitting, but my sitting is more so of, I'm just waiting, but I'm doing all that I can. I'm doing my part, all that I can to for God to bless and move me forward because I know blessings are on the way. Blessings are here. My life is good. My life is good. And I tell y'all again, the train is moving. Don't miss it. Hey, the train is moving. Don't miss it because the wind and the breeze is blowing. Listen, listen, I want y'all to make sure that you join me also next Tuesday uh, at uh, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard. So you're going to watch my show at 6. You're going to watch. You're going to go to YouTube with Kim, uh, the Proclamation 101 at 7 Central Standard Time. So 8 o'clock. Her time, seven o'clock my time for her show. And then with me, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time, I will be having Dr. Pamela Hardy. We're going to be talking about some good stuff and it's going to be a fun show. So you definitely don't want to miss it. I'm going to definitely going to post it so you don't miss out on what we are doing here at the Today Is Your Day. Listen, y'all see the shirt? You want it? You like it? DM me. I'm also going to be putting out a little later, but if uh, you like the shirt, we are selling it, of course. It's here for you. We don't want to make you miss out. So DM me right here on uh, Facebook, or you can hit me up on our website, davisconsultantsgroup.com. We definitely want to thank, okay, uh, Pastor Antoine Wallace for joining us. We want to thank uh, Kim and all the others. Thank you, Jennifer. I mean, we, we, we got a good turnout today. And, you know, I want you all to still have this great turnout when Ricky is not on the show. I just want to throw that out there. <laughs> Uh, uh, you know, we love him. He's welcome back at any time, but I, I would love y'all's continuous support uh, for the Today Is Your Day show. Listen, God is blessing, and I'm here to tell you, things may look bleak in your life, but he's there, and he's working, and I'm telling you, you're, you're not stuck. You're not stuck. You're moving, but make sure that you are going in the direction of your destiny and not going against or away from it. But God's with you, no matter what it looks like. God's with you. Things are working out in your favor. You just have to hold on, hold on. I had a song in my head, but it went away. Yeah, so the song is tomorrow. Post for tomorrow. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, the yeah, song yeah. Is okay, that's the song for tomorrow. <laughs> hold on, hey, help us on the way. All right. Um, I'm gonna be posting this, but while I'm doing that, hey, if um, you can pray us out, if you want to prophesy, whatever you want to do, 
whenever you feel led, I'm going to keep posting uh, these comments so people can see them. And uh, you just be free. Amen. I feel led to go get tacos. So I'm going to. <laughs> 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 but no 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 let's let's pray i'm excited about uh what i believe uh any everybody actually that's that's watching this program i really feel like the lord has you in a season where he's trying to get your attention about some things that there have been some things that you've been missing uh and it's not because god hasn't been speaking is that your your focus has been on what you want has been on what you're, you've already set out and, and laid out and planned. And what the Lord wants from you in this season is an offering. And this offering is not money. This offering is not a, a check. What the offering that he wants out of you is your plan. That if you're willing to give him the offering of your plans, watch this, the offering of your ideas about his plan, the offering of how you think, the, the the procedure and the process should look to your promise all of that because we we have a tendency to receive the promises of God and we and once God gives us a promise we then run off and say all right thank you God I got it from here but no 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 God gives he gives us the promise and then he takes us by the hand and walks us to it and so we've got to be willing to to offer that to him god i i i i know you said this to me i know you gave me this idea in a dream i know you called me out and gave me this prophecy about this and so i thought that this should be happening and i thought that this relationship should be working and i thought this opportunity should have opened but you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna take all of my thoughts of what i thought things should have been and I'm going to give it to you and as an offering. I'm going to give you my disappointments as an offering. I'm not going to let my disappointment become a seed in my heart that grows into bitterness and that grows into resentment and that grows into discontent and that grows into frustration. No, because if I let that stuff stay in my heart, it's going to grow into something that's going to choke the word out. But if I give it to God as an offering, it can become a sweet smelling fragrance in his nostrils and it will become something that he will say, I will receive this and I will use this to propel you forward. So, Father, let's pray and let's give God an offering tonight. Father, you are good. Hallelujah. You are good and you are kind. And I thank you for your benevolence toward us. I thank you that before the stars were formed, you were thinking about us. I thank you that before you brought forth the mountains, we were on your mind. I thank you that before you even stepped out uh, upon the waters of creation and said, let there be light. I thank you that you had fashioned and formed a plan for our lives. I thank you that you are indeed our alpha and our our Omega. I thank you that there is nothing that can take place in time that you have not already uh, created a plan around it. I thank you, Father, that we find security in the plans of God. I thank you, Father, that we find security in the purposes of God. For your word says that many are the plans in a man's heart, but it is the purposes of God that will prevail. Father, I'm asking you to escort us into a season called prevail prevail. Escort us into a season where your purposes are prevailing in our minds. Your purposes are prevailing in our emotions. Your purposes are prevailing in our careers. Your purposes are prevailing in our relationships. Your purposes are prevailing in every arena and facet of our lives. And Father, we bring you an offering. We dare not approach your throne without an offering. And we bring you the offering of our disappointments. Father, we confess to you that there are things that have happened in our lives that we've been disappointed by. There are things that happened that we didn't think should have gone that way. There are things that have not happened that we think should have already taken place. And Father, we give you that thing as an offering. You can have our grievances. You can have our disappointments. You can have our shortcomings. You can have our frailties. You can have our weaknesses. And I thank you, Father God, that no longer will I 
our weaknesses become a, 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 a stumbling block for us, but they are offerings to you. And I thank you that in our weaknesses, we're asking you to live big in us and be strong in us. And we're giving it to you and we're sacrificing it before you. Now, Father, consume it by your fire. Consume those hurts and those disappointments and those grievances and that impatience. Consume it by your fire. Consume it by your love. Consume it by your purposes and your plans. And Father, I thank you that you are leading us. Guide us with your eyes in this season. I thank you, Father God, that you just like with Noah, that the Bible says that Noah found favor in the eyes of God. I'm asking that we find favor in your eyes. I thank you that when we behold you, we see favor. When you look at us, we you see favor. When you look at our lives and our purposes and our careers and our finances, look at it through your favor in the name of Jesus. Now, Father, I'm asking you to put courage in our heart for this season. I'm asking that you cause us to be courageous. I'm asking that you cause us to be strong. I thank you, Father God, that we don't have to be strong in ourselves, but I thank you that in you, we take on the spirit of might. In you, we are full of power and vigor. In you, we are full of vitality. In you, we are full of life. I thank you, Father God, that the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is residing on the inside of us and is resurrecting old dreams, is resurrecting old hopes, is resurrecting the promises of God. I thank you, Father God, that every promise in the lives of your people where they felt like the promise died and they felt like the prophecy had deceased. I thank you that the resurrecting power of God is breathing on the promises of God. Breathe upon the prophecies you've spoken over us. Breathe upon the plans that you have for our lives. Breathe upon the expected end that you've written for us and cause life to come back again to it. Cause life to come back to those dreams. Cause life to come back to our hopes. Cause life to come back to our faith. Cause life to come back to our courage. And Father, I thank you that we will take on this strength and we will run through troops and we will leap over walls and we will say it is the Lord's doing. It is the Lord's doing. It is the Lord's doing. We don't know how it's going to work out, but the Lord will do it. We don't know how it's going to be fixed, but the Lord will do it. We don't know how it's going to be mended, but the Lord will do it. It is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. I'm asking you, Father, to marvel us. I'm asking you, Father, yeah, in the month of May, marvel your people. Marvel us. Marvel us. I thank you that we will declare out of our mouths that we have been marveled by God. We stand in awe of you. We've watched your hand perform miracles. We've seen your hand work wonders. And I thank you that you are doing marvelous things in our lives. I thank you that every day you're doing something marvelous. I thank you that every every month you're doing something marvelous. I thank you that we live and we breathe and we move in the marvel of our God. And Father, we will give you the glory for it. And I'm asking you to do this because we are bearers of your name. I'm asking you to do this because we are carriers of the name of Yahweh. And Father, because we carry your name, I thank you that when you do it for us, you're making an announcement about your reputation. I thank you that when you bless us, you announce to all of creation that you are a God that blesses. When you forgive us, you announce to all of creation that you are a God that forgives. When you move us into prosperity, you announce to all of creation that you are a God that prospers. When you break us through, you announce to all of creation that you are the Lord of the breakthrough. Do it in our lives, Father, so that creation can stand in awe of you. Do it in our marriage is God uh, so that creation can stand in awe of you. Uh, do it in their finances, God, uh, so that creation can stand in awe of you. Uh, oh, Father, I thank you that you will live up to your name. You will live up to your reputation. Uh, you will live up to your history. Uh, you will live up to your integrity. Uh, and we will give you the glory uh, and the honor uh, and the praise uh, and the matchless, beautiful, uh, all-encompassing, wonderful uh, name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Uh, amen. Uh, and amen.
Hey, man, come on. <laughs> I'm to make some noise out there. Woo! Definitely sharing in this comments. And I, oh, uh, what? Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. But we also thank you, Ricky, for joining us today. Thank you for that powerful prayer. Thank you for the nuggets today. Uh, we, we, I, I knew, I heard the Lord when I, when he said, ask Ricky to be on the show. Ask Ricky to be on the show. And he said, yes. Y'all, he said, yes. Yeah, and here we are knowing how we can be unstuck. Listen, I promise you, if you follow what you heard today, the nuggets, uh, the, the, the practical things that he, he's just given us today, that God has just downloaded into him to give us today, I promise you, you will be blessed. I promise you, your life will turn around. Again, don't look at Sarah and Sue over there because they did their... Uh, Seven day uh, fast. Listen, if you got to take out seven people for lunch, go do it. I'm not telling yeah. you that you that money, but if that's what God is telling you to do, He said, be obedient. But also, early He said, we have to stay grateful. Absolutely. Have to stay grateful. Don't forget, don't forget all the great things that God has been doing for you this whole time. I promise you, your life is not as horrible as you think that it is. I promise you, if you really look at your life, you're not stuck at all. You're not stuck at all. So we just thank God. We thank you. I'm trying to make sure that people are in the comments going crazy. Listen, again, we thank the Lord that y'all are going to be back my next show when Ricky is not on here. Praise God. Can I do something real quick? You can do whatever you want. Uh, -uh I want tacos. I'm about to go. But uh, <laughs> but I do want to prophesy to uh, 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 Betsy. Uh, I, I, I felt that too. Go ahead. Oh, you felt that. You felt that. <laughs> I did. I did. Uh, uh, Betsy, uh, what I what I saw was, uh, uh, I heard the Lord say that you and Herman were going to go and experience the latter rain. But there are things and seeds that you've sown in a season past that you have all given to the Lord. And the Lord said you had thought you had lived in the harvest of those seeds. And you had thought that you had lived in the fullness of those seeds. And you actually had intended to go and plant more seeds because you thought you needed to put more in the ground. But what you're going to find out is that there is some new forms of harvest that's coming to you as you all obey God. And the Lord says he wants you to know that he his eye has been upon you you and that this next this decision that you guys made to go to Holland actually was a faith move and you had said that it may not have been the best time and maybe uh, 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 we're hoping that we're supposed to be doing this but the Lord says I know that you've done this as a faith move towards me and what he's about to do is resurrect old dreams and there are plans and desires that you and Herman have had that you put on the back burner and the Lord says you're going to find as a reward for your faithfulness the breathing of life on old dreams and you're going to find the rekindling of old relationships and the rekindling of old uh, uh, connections and friendships for this next season that you're going into and though the relationships had been old God says I put a new purpose on it so the Lord says get ready to move into seasons where it, it looks like uh, you've been there before it looks like you've done it before but these things have been marked with new seasons and new things now I don't open it up and uh, 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 I might have to uh, uh, pull out. <laughs> it's so funny. As you were talking, I said, "No, there's somebody else that he actually hears." So go ahead. <laughs> well, you know, we we're not going to stop with God's name. Yeah, because I want tacos. You're going to get your tacos, I promise. You're going to get your tacos. <laughs> uh, pro proclaim the word. I don't know who you are, uh, but the Lord says that you are not forsaken and you have not been a person abandoned or, or ignored by him. But you have been a person that have been a person of great prayer and intercession and have felt like you had the ear of God. Uh, but when it came to you, you felt like God ignored and overlooked you and, and only used you for the lives and betterment of other people and even other ministries that you've been an intercessor for and seen God bless, but then you've not seen it for yourself. But the Lord says, behold, sing, O barren, for these are the days of your productivity and the days of your fruitfulness. And you're getting ready to experience uh, 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 the season where the Lord calls the, the blessings of the faithful. The Bible says that the faithful will abound in blessings. You're getting ready to walk into a season where the blessings of the Lord abound in your life because of your faithfulness to him. For the enemy had tried to even escort 
escort you into a city. Whoa, what do I see? The, the enemy had even tried to escort you into this season of depression and to, to make you feel as though uh, uh, you, you had lost the ear of God for your life. But the Lord says he's getting ready to reverse it. And the years that the canker worm and the palmer worm and the locust had eaten, and even the years where you had given to other people and to make sure that their visions and their dreams came to pass, God says, I'm getting ready to turn the tables and you're getting ready to see that you are not forsaken, neither are you forgotten, but this is your day of salvation. This is your day of deliverance. And you are getting ready to sing again for the enemy had tried to steal your song and made you one that did that said, I cannot sing the songs of Zion while in captivity. But the Lord says your captivity is over and you're getting ready to move into a season of great liberty and great fruitfulness said the spirit of grace all right i'm gonna I'm pull out amen amen <laughs> glory to god glory to god. hallelujah god bless you pastor jonathan davis <laughs> <laughs> i was like i'll let you I, no, I, I mean, I, we can we, we can pray for Jonathan. I know obedience is a is a uh, people do things, and I know everybody's on Facebook doing stuff, and everybody got a program, and everybody got this. But but there's nothing like following and obeying God. So, and when you're obeying God, it doesn't matter if ten thousand people are on Facebook. It doesn't look like you when you're obeying God. Uh, and so I think it's important that we cover and we pray uh, for people that are following the voice of God. And so, Father, we pray for Jonathan. I thank you for the call of God on his life. Yeah. I thank you for the call of God on his life. I thank you, Father God, that every tactic and scheme and ploy and, 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 and agenda of hell against his call that has we bring it to naught in Jesus' name. And I thank you that the that even the schemes that have come out of hell over his confidence in this season, I decree and declare that they will not prosper in the name of the Lord. And I thank you, Father God, that according to your word that says that the Lord is our confidence. I thank you that you are in imparting into Jonathan new confidence for this season. I thank you that you are imparting into him new courage. I thank you that you're causing him, even mantling him and with the mantle of Joshua to escort people into places of destiny and promise. And even for himself, where he's felt like he's been locked out of his own purpose. I thank you, Father, that as he escorts people into uh, understanding and walking into their purposes and into their the plans that you have for them, I thank you that he is coming into a place of fulfillment for the enemy had tried to drown his heart with the waters of discouragement. But I decree over him that the spirit of the Lord is lifting up a standard in his heart against discouragement, against discontent, even against fatigue. I thank you that you are strengthening his arms. You are causing a new strength to come to his legs that he's able to walk in the plans and purposes of God. I decree, Father God, that you are strengthening his ankles and you are making making his feet like Heinz feet, that he is able to stand upon the promises of God and see them come to pass. Now, Father, I pray and I ask that you would give him the patience that you gave Abraham. And I thank you, Father God, that even though it took a long time for Abraham to see the promises of God, that your word says that through faith and patience, he inherited the promise. I thank you, Father God, that Jonathan will not be one that dreams and dies with a dream, but I thank you that he will be one that inherits the promises of God. He is an inheritor. He is an heir. He has an inheritance. He has a promise. He has a future. Shut up, devil. I bind your voice. I bind your words in his ear. And, and I decree that he does have a future. And his future is secure. Yeah. And the enemy had not aborted it. And he had not caused detours. For the enemy had made him feel as though that because of decisions he had made, that he had created detours around the purposes of God. But the devil is a liar and we decree over his life that the purposes of God are sure, that the purposes of God are yes and amen. And even this hesitation, Jonathan, about this uh, a new desire for another certification, you've been out seeking God about if you needed to add this uh, skill to your bill. The Lord says he's about to grace you for it, but he's going to do it through the power of relationship. And you're not going to have to pay for this. He's going to impart into you a, a new skill and a new uh, a facet to what 
what he's called you to do, but it's going to come through a human connection. It's going to come through a human relationship. Father, I bless him. Yeah, I bless him. Hey, I bless him. And I remove from him the any clothes and cloaks of shame and condemnation and any clothes and cloaks of word curses that even he's spoken over himself. I decree I, uh, that every seed that has been planted in his heart and mind that has not been of you, I decree that it is cursed. And I de- thank you, Father, that the seeds of the words of God are bearing fruit in his life. Make Jonathan a fruitful vine. Make him a fruitful vine. Make him a fruitful vine and even restore his dream life. But the enemy had even tried to hijack his dreams and made it to where they become muddled and not clear. But I thank you that you are clearing the waters of his dream life and you are causing him to see clearly, hear clearly and move swiftly according to the plans of God. And we give you the glory. Hallelujah. We give you the glory for it and we give you the honor for it in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Well, amen. Today is your day. <laughs> amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And amen. I'm expecting, I'm going to stay in a place of expectancy. I mean, amen. I receive that. I take it. And I promise you, those that are watching, if you heard something that you want to take, it's in the air. You can take it as well. That's how prophecy works. If you want it, you can take it as well. So I receive it. And I'm expecting, I'm expecting it to come forth. I'm expecting it to come forth. I'm not even going to get started. I thank God that he let you prophesy today. I will not. And I just bless the Lord. I just bless you. (laughs) And I thank you. I thank you uh, for being here on the show. (sighs) Left speechless, pretty much. And, uh, And I pray again, those that have watched, that those that are going to watch and that are watching right now or even later, that you take what you hear. I promise you, you're not stumbling upon this just by happenstance. There is something that you need to hear, something that you need to catch, something that you really need to receive that is being said on this show. So I don't want you to miss it. I promise you, there are some people that are on here that they are just, they've been waiting. They've been in this place of wanting their life to turn around. But I promise you, I promise you, if you just give God that yes, if yeah. you just give God that yes, there's also been people on here, and I, I keep hearing this, that 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 have an assignment that they've that God gave them a long time ago. Y'all, y'all have been saying how you've been in this stuck place that things have not been happening. God, I mean, you gave me this assignment. And you told me to do this, but uh, things just aren't falling into place. But God is like, okay, but you haven't even taken step one. Mm-hmm. You haven't even taken step one. And I'm telling you, those that are watching right now, you need to take step one. Those, uh, what, what's the story? And this keeps coming to me always. Uh, when God told the blind man to go to the water, I can't think of the pool of the lake right now with the body of water, but the blind man, he told him to go wash his face. And once he washed his face, he could see, but the assignment was just to go to the water. God didn't tell him. Jesus didn't walk him to the water. He gave him the assignment to go just like he's given you all the assignment, but you've been sitting in this place of tool and thumbs waiting for God to do something. God, I'm waiting on the money. God, I'm waiting on uh, these things to happen. So then I can do it. But God already gave you He gave you the assignment to do. I promise you, once you take that step, he will bless the rest. I promise you, once you take that first step, once you take that first step, I promise you, the blessings will come. You'll you'll run into the other people that have what you need to go to the next step. I'm telling you, there are people on here that have just been waiting, that have just been waiting. And God's like, hey, go, go to the water. Go, go clean your face so you can see. I'm not telling you how to get to the water. He just told the man, Jesus just told the man, just go, go clean your face. He gave him the assignment and he went. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. God's been telling you all, God's been telling a lot of people on here things that you need to do, but you've been disobedient because you've really just been waiting. As we talked about earlier, you've just been sitting. You've been just sitting. And I'm telling you today, it's time. It's time. It's time. Once you give God your yes, the blessings will come. The people will come. The things, listen, just being obedient and doing it, even if it doesn't look like things are happening, do it. God will bless. Guess what? That window, that window is open. 
and I feel a breeze coming. I okay. promise you those. And even in this place of when God told me to even for us to talk about being stuck, there are people that have just been feeling like that's where their life is right now. And I'm telling you, it's not. You really need to catch what has been said today. Your life is not stuck. You need to be going towards your destiny. Open your eyes to see the great things that are going on in your life. See the great things that are going on in your life because your life is actually not stuck. But you do you do need to give him the yes. God has been waiting on your yes. God's been waiting on a lot of people's yes on here. So I'm going to be quiet. But I, I, I thank you all for joining today. But I pray that as you all continue to watch the show, as you all continue to move forward in what God has told you to do, just continue to stay grateful. Stay grateful. Yes, things aren't happening as fast as you want them to be. Yes, things aren't moving as smoothly as you want them to. Go to the water and wash your face. Do what you know you're supposed to do. But in that time of waiting, keep going, keep moving, keep going forward. There's so much for you to do. As I always say, there's people waiting on you. There's people waiting on you. But if you don't do your part, how will the people be blessed? How will the people be blessed? Yes, you are gonna. You may be walking. It won't take 40 years, but you may be walking. But in that journey that you're walking, make sure you're picking things up, you're learning. Because a lot of things that I know God told me to do, I'm doing. And of course, I saw the end and I want the end to happen now. But if I would have gotten to the end the next day, these things that I was supposed that have been added as I've been going on this journey, I would have never gained. That's another that's another show. But I, again, thank you all. Gosh, it's that uh, when the, the preacher says, and this is my last point, I promise you I'm about to. OK. <laughs> but again, I thank you all for being such participants today. I thank you, uh, Pastor Prophet uh, Evangelist uh, Ricky, for joining us today. Uh, it has definitely been a blessing. Um, we have uh, been getting comments left and right today. Um, it has just been amazing. And you are always welcome back on the show. Uh, listen, we have a show almost every week. And so whenever you want to come back, I know the people will come. <laughs> we would love for uh, you to come back as well. Again, I thank you all. Now, I, I did, there's people were asking, so I'm being obedient and I put uh, the cash app and um, and PayPal at the bottom of the screen. Uh, just a good reminder, tomorrow at um, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you will join me at uh, a word and a song with Montre Roberts. Uh, you can go to her page. She's also put that in the chat. Uh, joining me next Tuesday at 6 Central Standard Time, I'll be talking with the doctor, uh, the apostle Dr. Pamela Hardy. We're going to have a good show then. And then you're going to go over to YouTube and do uh, and watch the Proclamation 101, where they'll be talking about interpretation of dreams and visions. Again, you don't want to miss this. Ricky, please tell them how they can connect with you. Please tell them how uh, they can buy your books or whatever you have going on that they can be a part. Oh, well, wow. uh, yes. Oh, no, I don't have a church. Uh, <laughs> um, but that, but that, that you can preach at your church. So please. Uh, good, no. good. Very, very true. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, but yes, I do have a, uh, I do travel and preach or whatnot. But I am not a pastor of a church. I attend the church, All Nations Worship Assembly. Uh, but uh, I have a podcast, Scriptures Revealed podcast. You can find it on uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts, uh, iHeartRadio Podcasts as well. Um, and I have a YouTube channel, channel as well that I post uh, teachings on. I have several books you can purchase again off of Amazon. One is called The War of the Wheels the the hearts fight to embrace the future it's probably it was my very first book i wrote uh is is really short and brief however i i literally wrote that book uh shut up in my room i had a uh, one of my friends here had been on me on me on me about writing about writing about writing and i'm like eh, one day i will one day i will and he was just like no you 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 gotta write uh shut myself up in my room 
uh, an entire weekend and wrote that book. Uh, and, and it's a result of, of conversations and revelations I received from God regarding that. Uh, I wrote a book after that called Unsearchable. Um, and it is literally a readable commentary on the first chapter in the book of Ephesians. Uh, uh, it's man, roughly maybe about 120 so pages uh, again, uh, but it's literally just on Ephesians chapter one. Uh, but I kind of wrote it in very conversational style because uh, I wanted people to grab a hold and understand. I believe if you can understand the first chapter of Ephesians, you can lay a good foundation for your Christian uh, walk. Uh, so, yeah, you can purchase those on Amazon as well. Uh, the podcast has been on hiatus. However, it is getting ready to start back up. Um, and I don't know where my notes are about uh, what. Oh, here we are. Uh, that podcast is starting back up um, because I believe that one of the things that the Lord told me. Uh, oh, the name of the Ephesians book was Unsearchable. Unsearchable. Uh, uh, play off of one of the scriptures in, the, in chapter one of Ephesians that talks about the unsearchable riches of Christ. And I'm I'm not going to get stirred about that. <laughs> but yeah, the unsearchable riches of Christ. Um, but the Lord gave me a word about 2023 that it would be a, a season of famine and redemption a season of famine and redemption that we're going to see famine show up uh, in various sectors on various sides. We're going to see the food industry affected by this. We're, we're going to see the financial institution affected by this. This was at the uh, top of the year. Uh, the, the Lord gave me a word about famine. We're also going to see it show up in our churches. We're going to find out that there, there are going to be places where the word of the Lord is rare. Uh, you, and, and again, it is by the direction of God. We're going to see famine show up. But at the same time, we're going to see the redemptive hand of God. We're going to see God do marvelous things with his people in the midst of a season of famine. Uh, uh, and so the podcast is coming back. Uh Next week, actually, and we're going to be dealing with over the next couple of, couple of episodes uh, on teachings on walking us through what a season of famine looks like to make sure that we're not living on the famine side. We're living on the redemption side. Uh, so I'm excited about that. You want to be on the lookout for that. Follow me on Facebook. Uh, I tend to post all my updates, uh, insights, all of that there. And yeah, I just I again, I'm just a guy that loves Jesus and loves the scriptures. Uh, that's who I am. Uh, so yeah, that's me. And that loves uh, Chinese chicken wings. I mean, and he wants tacos tonight. So that's yes. good. Yes, um, yes. I, I definitely <laughs> want to say this before we leave. I have learned so much from this uh, because I'm much, well, I'm not much older. I'm going to stick with that. Uh, from this young man. Yes, uh, I respect my elders. Amen. I, amen. <laughs> amen. I learned a lot of spiritual things. I mean, I, I learned more so about the prophetic and, and just the, how God moves and God's movement from this guy. So I, I promise you, if you connect with him, you will not be disappointed. I, I thank him for teaching me so many things. And a lot of the things I, uh, I am activated in is because uh, this guy right here. So uh, he may be short, uh, much shorter than me, but uh, he, will, he is a giant uh, in the spiritual realm, realm. And we are just so grateful for him again, please uh, tell him again how to get connected with you. Uh, the, the easiest way, follow me on Facebook where y'all are watching. Again, I post all my updates, insights there. You can follow me the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Listen, um, he has a lot of things going on, so we definitely want to have him back on the show to talk about some things because, as you can see, you open up a little crack for him, and he goes with it. And so we definitely don't want to miss any of that we want to have him back on the show um i thank god that he is on the show you have an audience that is ready and hungry for whatever you have to offer so please hurry up with your podcast um and so we will be waiting with our chicken chinese chicken wings in hand ready to eat up that food and then whatever you have to offer us and so again thank you all for joining today is your day look be on the lookout we will be having another show next tuesday uh, with uh, Dr. Apostle Pamela Hardy. So you don't want to miss that. And that following week, we will um, be with uh, Young People Nation with uh, the Perrys. And we are really excited to hear all that they have uh, to talk about and their awesome podcast that they have uh, that is blessing so many people and, and really having real conversations uh, about our young people that we all just need to hear and that we're really maybe missing. 
So God bless all of you. Thank all of you for, for joining. I even saw uh, oh, Miss Huzzy. Thank you so much for uh, joining us uh, today. Brother Goodlow, Pastor Goodlow is on here. And uh, we are just so elated again that all of y'all showed up. And I am just believing that even when Ricky is not on this show, <laughs> we're all going to be here. I don't know, keep making that joke. Also, DM me. Uh, you have my website, uh, davidsonsultansgroup.com. Um, or you can uh, DM me on Facebook about the shirts. I'm modeling here. This is my modeling look on it. Uh, I'm really excited about it, but I would love for you to uh, have one as well. So please reach out to me so I can tell you how you can purchase one. Not going to be that much, but I definitely would love your support. Again, also, same way, DM me here on Facebook or uh, um, go to our website, um, davisconsultantsgroup.com. We are looking for some more sponsors. Listen, again, I'm going to tell you again, this train is moving and we don't want you to miss it. We don't want you to miss it. If God has picked your heart to be a sponsor for this po um, the podcast, hey, it's coming, uh, this show, um, please reach out to me because this train is a blessed one. And again, we don't want you to miss it because it's moving and you will get left. Amen and amen. All right. Again, thank you all for joining us and we will see you soon. Remember, today is your day.